Hi, I am Dr. Sadashivam and I am so happy and privileged to be considered for this project and uh, I really wish we get an opportunity to facilitate this uh, project. I would like to share my initial thoughts in terms of how we would like to take this uh, training forward. At the outset, I look at it from three parts. The first is the training identification part and the second is the content development part and third is the delivery of training part. Now, we are at a very initial uh, stage and uh, it was a very uh, uh, um, good meeting with uh, Mamta Madam today in the morning with Mimish and uh, Vamika. Uh, I would be driving the whole project uh, and in fact, I wanted to give you a written account of uh, how uh, uh, my approach would be. But since it runs into too many pages, uh, the connect that I would be able to establish with you obviously cannot be done in a document form which runs into some five or seven pages. And that is the purpose of this uh, video as uh, I had requested you in the uh, telecon in the morning. I went through this design document that Mimesh had sent and it captures uh, one of the essential elements and uh, uh, it gives me a very good uh, indication in terms of uh, uh, your expectations in terms of how you would like us to take this program forward and I assure you that we will uh, do a great training program which will be useful for all the participants. So the first part of this training program obviously uh, talks about the conceptual framework. Uh, I understand that it's a two-day training program and I can see that the first day is focusing on the theoretical programs and the second day is uh, uh, case studies, presentations, etc, etc. At the outset, it appears to me that this program was initially designed for face-to-face uh, -face instructor led uh, training programs and I'm sure it was designed during the pre-COVID era. Yes, times are changing and we have some restrictions in terms of uh, keeping pace with the new normal. So not to worry, we will uh, design it in a uh, manner that it's uh, done for a webinar. But any trainer in the world would prefer a face-to-face -face training program. The trainer is more uh, comfortable. He can interact with the participants, he can watch their uh, emotions, uh, the pedagogy is like that. But considering some of the limitations in the post-corona, uh, obviously that needs to be considered and we will do a great job because we need to live with the new normal. So the challenge for me right now is how do we bring those elements in a webinar? The second is what we should do in order to connect with the participants better. So. The uh, one the greatest challenge for me is to make the content interesting, bring in some real world examples, and then uh, ensure that participants uh, really uh, enjoy the program and really add value to them. So these are some of the things that I will be keeping in mind as I develop and facilitate this uh, uh, program. So they will, all that will be in the top of my mind. So coming back to the specific uh, uh, content, initially we are talking of the conceptual framework. So when we talk about the conceptual overview, we are going to talk about the history, how in the past people have transgressed their position and also giving it a kind of a storyline. The concept of uh, vigilance is not new. In fact, Chanakya in his literary work Arthasastra, he has talked a lot about vigilance and uh, some of the measures to prevent that, to stop transgression of powers in their effect, uh, you know, efforts towards a perfect state administration. We will make a storyline like this and then we will touch upon classical, medieval and modern day philosophers. Now as we talk about the management philosophers, uh, some certain names that comes to my mind is Henry Fail. In fact, Henry Fail talks about all aspects of vigilance in a much greater detail. He talks about punitive vigilance, preventive vigilance, participative vigilance, etc. etc. In fact, Fail considers each of these as a 
management tool very much like your four pillars of uh, leadership like planning directing organizing controlling etc etc we will bring be bringing all these storylines so as uh, to build a strong foundation for the training program first day obviously we will have uh, ppts information dissemination etc etc so that will you know the whole day will be on first day will be full of theories and second day will probably be a lot of uh, practical uh, exercises i would like to ex uh, you know explain some important aspects that we will consider in the program the first is the cognitive aspect and second is the behavioral typically when you talk about cognitive it is information dissemination and secondly the behavioral part in the sense we would lead all this we expect all this to change in a uh, lead in a uh, change in behavior of the participants we don't want to become them to become knowledgeable people but we want people to assimilate this knowledge assimilate this knowledge sensitize some of these points and then you know change their own behavior and also change the behavior with others their peer groups we are talking all the three aspects of it the punitive preventive and the participation therefore participation from all stakeholders is extremely necessary so i think uh, these things will take uh, you know the major po portion of the first day uh, that will be more of an instructor facilitated training program a little bit of theory okay but of course interactions will be there but the first day will be full of theory uh, instructor led lectures etc etc you know that's the pedagogy i have in mind so once that is done then we are coming to the second day which is uh, the very important portion you know that's about the e government marketplace very very important aspect especially we have seen um, how this particular department has uh, progressed in the last four or five years i have interacted with lots and lots of people in the government e marketplace and uh, how much of developments uh, they have created uh, in the government each uh, you know e marketplace lots and lots of challenges uh, and they had surmounted all these challenges in uh, a very nice manner in fact i have been tracking this department for the last four years and the kind of uh, you know improvement and today i think it's uh, uh, handling uh, money worth thousands and thousands of crores okay so we will have a small session on government e marketplace because that's very important for a public sector undertaking and it is also uh, you know one of the mandatory requirements of uh, the bureau of uh, public uh, the enterprises okay the second of course uh, we will also have a topic on audit etc etc and this is typically when you talk about audit uh, participants uh, uh, need to understand what audit is there are lots and lots of people who have uh, done the audit themselves or in some cases they might have been subjected to such audits but nevertheless every employee in the organization needs to understand what audit is why it is important and what is their role in the whole process and uh, of course certain cases will be done i i will uh, be doing uh, some uh, uh, sessions on this in fact i researched a lot uh, uh, from audits around the world first is from italy very interesting uh, case study which i would like to share with you and the second is uh, something that happened in the united states that's about uh, uh coffee growers that's about the participative vigilance it's about the coffee growers it's a very good case study that will give you a foundation for uh, uh, you know group exercises etc etc it will give you a very uh, initial understanding of what uh, audit is uh, uh, and uh, they are expected to assimilate some of these elements and using them in their own presentations the next uh, day after that what we will do is we will take up one of those uh, case studies uh, by the way i also have another case studies uh, of a coal mine in australia in fact i used that case study when i did a program for uh, uh, bmw uh, in muscat i'll try to get hold of that case study if i get that that will be great of course we also have lots and lots of cases in india because in, in india if you talk about some good case studies about preventive uh, Uh, vigilance 
some organization come to my mind indian railways anywhere in the country anything about preventive vigilance is discovered uh, you know discussed the railway is taken up so i would like to take up one case study about railways so that people are able to connect themselves in this particular case because you are also part of uh, the ministry of railways and participants can connect themselves very well with this case study and uh, incorporate some of uh, the aspects of it which they can use in their presentations uh, the next day you will surely see the quality in the final outcome and uh, i will ensure that the participants bring out that quality especially about the indian railways what are those aspects how we will approach uh, how the participants have understood that and how the the participants will use uh, them in their presentations and for this we will be using certain problem solving methods um, i would expect uh, the participants to use these tools when they come up with uh, their uh, presentations so little little bit of introduction about those problem solving uh, uh, approach will also be discussed so at the outset we will be talking about some tools like 5w1h which is what when how and you know finally why those uh, the one the second is uh, we can also use the root cause analysis you can attribute the causes whether it is man whether it is method whether it is material whether it is uh, uh, machine so we will provide that framework for participants to use this framework when they do these presentations so that presentation is of a little higher quality and they also understand the whole thing well so when uh, we do those uh, case studies uh, it will provide them uh, certain indications in terms of how they should prepare the ppt and how they should present the ppt so this format and template in terms of uh, how they should introduce the topic why is there a need for that and then they will use those problem solving tools to solve some of those existing uh, problems they can select any one of those tools and uh, once they do that from their own experiences they have to take in certain experiences they can say these are some of the challenges that we have and then they have to uh, you know uh, suggest some problem, uh, you know solutions but the issue is as you go on solving these problems surmounting these problems new problems come up these are all part of life part of any official uh, uh, life so they have to surmount all that and they all that should come in the presentation then we will be using a model which is called as a grow model g stands for goal r stands for reality o is option and then w is the way forward so typically g is the goal in this case corruption free country is our goal corrupt free organization in this case you know whatever organization in your case it is uh, i don't know uh, you know uh, corridor corporation so the second is everybody has big big ambitions we all would like to live in a utopian world the practical situations are different reality is different when you typically talk about a reality the policies procedures may not be clear the peers may not cooperate there will be resistance from people under you there will be resistance from your bosses who will say why are you doing this why are you over smart all that happens in organization that is the reality so obviously one has to you know leave everything and say lazy is fair why worry about it let things go on something like ram ke bharosa chhod de dete hain <laughs> like it often happen but that's not the way we work we are talking of uh, participative vigilance all of us have a role in the uh, preventive vigilance so what do we do look at some of options so as we as they do the presentation they will also say that these are some of the challenges that we are expecting and then they will put up those options and once those options are given they will select the best of those options and say this is what is the way forward i think this will bring in the right vibrations in the uh, training session because all our senior officers uh, um, you know manager level people and i it's my um, understanding that they will get to know because all of them are facing all managers are facing similar problems whether it is your company or any uh, you know any uh, corporation okay so at the end of the day as we have discussed in the agenda 
we will provide certain topics for all of these people separate separate topics we have a list of some 10 15 topics talking from e procurement audit whistleblowers ethics technology e governance conduct rules uh, right to information uh, complaint handling transgression of powers all these things happen in organizations and therefore vigilance is important so these are some of the uh, topics that i have uh, you know uh, selected and each group will be provided one or two topics based on their own convenience let them select the topic themselves and then come and present so i think uh, uh, it's all set and uh, i will put my mind in terms of how we can uh, 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 develop uh, uh, more content on uh, whatever we have discussed uh, so the guys will take up one of these they will use that particular tool that we had discussed uh, the problem solving tools and the broad framework which where we will be using this grow model uh, where they will set the goal in mind uh, what is the goal they would like to accomplish uh, for example uh, I, I would like to once again mention those top subjects because they are extremely important because I don't want to make it as a, a training program where the trainer that is me coming and giving big big lectures in terms of what what needs to be done etc etc people don't find that interesting anymore so my whole objective is to give the theoretical framework through a lecture mode during the initial stages and then give them uh, this i think that's my approach and if you have any uh, view on this in terms of how i should take it forward uh, we are uh, we are more than uh, willing to take your inputs and then incorporate that into the content that we will be making so some of those topics i would like to once again uh, the, say uh, one two three four Th these have been taken from uh, the template uh, procurement e procurement government e marketplace but i think uh, of course there are challenges associated with also that also we can use that government e marketplace audit whistleblower ethics and integrity is very important technology e governance conduct rules rti complaint handling and transgression of powers so i think uh, broadly we have set the stage so typically the first day it will be uh, on uh, the conceptual framework the history of preventive vigilance and then we will also be talking about how it has evolved since the medieval ages to the modern ages and to the um, uh, classical sorry from the classical to medieval to modern and in the modern uh, age we will be talking about some of the management gurus who have talked about preventive vigilance etc uh, etc et and that's how we would like to end the first day and the second day will be some case studies which i said some one from italy and one from us and one from australia depending on the time availability i will either select one of these three or probably all the three and you know just covering covering the broad aspects of that and then of course uh, the remaining time will be given for participants to come out with their own experiences pertaining to vigilance in their respective departments and divisions and uh, of course on the third day we will be talking about uh, certain aspects of uh, theoretical aspects uh, of uh, procurement audit whistleblower any uh, you know uh, right to information your conduct rules are important and i, I think there is a film on uh, vigilance uh, uh, which is created by the bureau of public sector enterprises we will film uh, that also very interesting film where people also can get that we can keep that for the third day and then on the final day we will give all these topics the groups will select one of these topics and make a presentation of course on the third day we will also be covering some of these problem solving tools maybe not much maybe for half an hour 10 10 minutes for each of these problem solving tools so that they understand what these tools are instead of you know my uh, past experience has been that whenever you ask participants to come with a presentation generally they are not structured they come speak something and go away as a result of which neither they are able to assimilate the content better nor the other participants but once we give this framework for them and a specific template for presentation in terms of what is it they, they would like to present and what, what is the introduction of that topic and um, what has been their experience in their own departments and then uh, what is their uh, goal of course we talked about the grow model what is their goal uh, second is what is the reality in hand some of the practical aspects and the options available and then the way forward
So in this, they will use those problem solving tools. Either they can use the root cause analysis or they can use the fish bone diagram for it or we will also use a model called as 5W and 1H. There are some hundreds of problem solving tools available, but you know, looking at limitations of time, we will, I think, limit it to number three numbers. And then this will be the fourth day. On the fourth day, I will try to have another panel member with me, that is Dr. Balraj. Uh, will be along with me as a panel member and we will have panel discussions in terms of how vigilance has evolved etc etc and then we will allow the participants also to participate very important aspect which i missed in this presentation when guys are doing their presentations we will have breakout rooms they can be created in the webinar itself so each one will be assigned to one specific group and whatever they do it will be in the part in the form of a group activity so the overall pedagogy I have planned like this, but I am sure uh, by virtue of your experience of having done uh, this kind of programs in your organization, because every organization has its own style in terms of uh, uh, organizing these kind of training programs. Since you mentioned during the start of the telecom that you have already uh, done one such program for your corporate office, uh, based on that experience, if you can give me any more inputs uh, that we should consider while developing the content or while delivering this training program we would like to hear from you that's it and uh, i i um, i'm expecting to receive a feedback from you so that i can put my guys on the content development job thank you thank you and we are very very eager to meet up with you in this training program thank you jai hind